So now we are going to look at factors that affect resistance of a conductor. We have basically four factors that affect the resistance of a conductor here. We have cross-sectional area. So let's explore, let's explain. How does cross-sectional area affect the resistance of a conductor? If the cross-sectional area, let's assume this was a wire. If this cross-sectional area was bigger, it means that you're going to have more electrons drifting through back at the cross-sectional area, if, and so meaning that the resistance of the conductor will be less. If this cross-sectional area is narrow or if it is small, it means that the electrons are drifting will have a very narrow space to drift through, and so it means that you're going to have more resistance. So in essence here, it means that the higher the cross-sectional area, the more the electrons that flow and so the more charge and therefore the less resistance. But if the cross-sectional area is small, it means that you're going to have a very small area for the electrons to drift and so it means that the resistance will be very high. And so in conclusion here we simply say that the cross-sectional area is inversely proportional to the resistance. That is the relationship between cross-sectional area and resistance. Let's go to the length of a conductor. For a length of a conductor, the longer the conductor, the longer the distance the electrons will have to travel. Increased length will lead to longer paths for electrons and that will lead to more electron collisions between electrons and ions and atoms along the length of the conductor. And so this will definitely lead to reduced drift velocity of the electrons. So in other words, if the conductor is very long, it means that the resistance will be very high because uh, the electrons will be traveling and colliding multiple times. If the conductor is shorter, it means that the resistance in that conductor will also be shorter. So this leaves us uh, with the conclusion that the resistance of a conductor is directly proportional to the length of that conductor. Then let's go to the temperature. If we increase the temperature in, if this was your conductor, this conductor has free moving electrons. If this electron or the, this conductor is heated up or if its temperature is increasing, it means that the vibrational energy of the atoms in this conductor is going to increase. This increase in the vibrational energy or the amplitude of the ions will make the collisions between these electrons that are drifting and the atoms to be greater. So these greater or bigger collisions will reduce the drift velocity of these electrons and reduction in the drift velocity of those electrons will definitely lead to increase in the resistance. So in other words, uh, increase in temperature will increase the vibrational amplitude of the ions. Uh, this will present bigger collision area and therefore a reduction in the drift velocity. And so this reduction in drift velocity will, uh, because of the temperature, will therefore cause an increase in resistance. So meaning that the higher the temperature, the higher the resistance. The lower the temperature, the lower the resistance to a conductor. Then finally, we have the nature of the material. Different materials will behave differently as far as resistance to flow of electrons will cons is concerned. So to get from these two, we are going to, uh, we have, we'll see that we have that resistance is inversely proportional to area. And we also have resistance being directly proportional to length. If we are to combine those two, we'll mean we'll have resistance is directly proportional to L over A. If we are to remove that uh, proportionality, if we are to introduce a, a equal signs, it means we are going to get introduce a constant of proportionality. So R is going to be equal to K L over A. If we are to make this K the subject of this formula, it will be K is going to be equal to R resistance times cross-sectional area over the length of the conductor. And this value of K 
in essence is what we are going to call the resistivity the resistivity of that conductor in, in question and this resistivity is denoted by that resistivity is going to be equal to resistance times cross-sectional area over L and uh, this the SI units for the resistivity is in ohm meters this brings us to the end of this video for Kisembo Academy this is Arnold Rangakuramia